Coach Moore, what, you know, we talked about your, your background and we've covered all that stuff. What, okay, so now you get, you have an opportunity, you accept the Roosevelt job. What got you or, or attracted you to Roosevelt? Because for, you know, the listeners who listen in Iowa, they're probably thinking the same thing. You know, that probably wasn't a top, top coveted job maybe, or a lot of people could talk themselves out of it. Well, how did you talk yourselves into it? Well, I think, you know, what enticed me from the beginning was, was the location. You know, it, it's in a premier place in the state of Iowa. It's right downtown in, in a city in Des Moines, the metro that, that is really a progressive city that, that does a great job. The Des Moines public school system is, um, is building relationships with the universities and, and the people around, around Des Moines. So I knew there was, some, there was some room for growth. And then what attracted me to Roosevelt in particular was, was the diversity within the school, um, you know, certainly – the leadership within our school system and, and, and the type of people that I was going to be able to work with and, and where my family was going to live, you know, and, and I think all those things were, were certainly front and center when I, when I was looking at this job. And then I think the, the, the other piece was the opportunity to attract assistant coaches to my program. You're, you're in a, you're in a big populated area. Uh, you're right in the heart of the, the CIML, which is by, you know, in my opinion, the best, the best conference in the state of Iowa. And, um, you're about 10 blocks away from, from probably one of the best programs in the history of, of the state of Iowa, and you're about three miles away from another, another powerhouse. And so you've got the opportunity to, um, on a daily basis, you know, see what the best programs are doing or at least be surrounded by those types of, of programs. And so I think all those things attracted me, um, you know, and, and, and certainly they've, they've all lived up to those, those expectations. And it's, it's been a really fun area to be with my family, you know, and, and, and be in a school district like we have been. Now, Coach, when you started going out and, and formulating your staff and putting together a list of people who could possibly fill the roles that you're looking for your assistant coaches, how did you go about that process, and, and who were some of the first calls that you made? Well, you know, certainly, again, different than, than when you were in college and, and certainly different than when I was at Green County. I was out in an area that, you know, wasn't as highly populated, so I had to really – Get into the get into the town and the community and learn who the who the leaders and the and the people that wanted to be good coaches in that community were. So that took a little more time. Whereas here, I was able to identify some guys that were just really good coaches and and really good people, and they were all in this area. So it kind of started with it started with that. And and the first call I made was was Coach Groper. And Coach Groper was a was a coach, a head coach at, at North Polk. He had been that for eight years. He'd been a part of that school district for a long time. And him and I had built a really good relationship at Iowa State. And, and I knew what kind of football coach he was. And more importantly, I knew what kind of man he was and what kind of worker he was. And so um, I knew that he was kind of itching to to have a new challenge in his life. And, and um, he was, he, he lives close to Des Moines Roosevelt. You know, he lives within 20 minutes. And, and really, I, I just called him and pitched him on an opportunity to let's do this thing together. Let's Instead of being one head coach, let's be two head coaches and two two minds together, and let's see if we can go do something that people haven't done in a long time. And um, he comes from a really eclectic, diverse family. He's got a wife that's from inner city Chicago. He's from out in um, really kind of northern Iowa a little bit and grew up on a farm town. And so he's got just such great perspective and, and uh, certainly been a head coach. And so um, he was the first call I made. Um, then I got, you know, Todd Blythe, a, a former great at Iowa State, was – was the second call I made because I knew he was a guy that could really um, jumpstart me in terms of getting some great energy around our program. If you could get a guy like that to coach coach receivers who had done it at such a high level, um, and so those are the first two calls I made. And then by by chance or by fate, I, I kind of got introduced to Coach McGacky because again, when you get a job really of this magnitude in a four A school in, in in Central Iowa in in the Metro, people call you and give you ideas of guys that you can that. that you can surround yourself with. And so I got introduced to Coach McGacky and, and uh, you know, uh, just this week we, we promoted him to defensive coordinator and, and, and really he's one of the best football coaches and minds I've ever been around. So that was a, a situation that kind of fell in my lap. And, and um, he can kind of tell you more on how our relationship developed and, and how I got him hired at the last minute. But he was a guy that was certainly on my radar within two, three weeks of taking the job. And, and we continue to build and foster our relationship. And, um, you know, here we are today. He's he's my defensive coordinator, and we feel really good about the direction of our program. Coach, you just hit on it. Um, you know, we're fortunate we have Coach McGacky with us, and that is, um, we're thankful, you know, and and appreciative that you're joined us tonight, Coach. 
So you get the call from, from Coach Moore, and he pitches you the job. Talk about what he said and how he sold you on jumping into this journey. You know, I mean, I don't know that there was much of a sell. Um, just talking to him and listening to his philosophy and his beliefs and the things that were important to him as, as a coach, as a person, and the vision that he was able to, um, you know, to, to, to get to, to articulate this because most of our conversations were over the phone. And, um, you know, so there really wasn't much to sell because of, of who he is as an energy person, as a person that's straightforward communication, you know, there's, um, uh, there's no mind games. So, so there was no sell on his part. He just had to be himself. Um, now the question became, you know, I need to have a job because, uh, as you may or may not be aware, high school coaching, you know, pays somewhere around, uh, you know, three or $4,000. And so, um, that all literally went down the week of the start of camp. Um, and when I say literally, I'm saying, hey, coach, after <laughs> literally six, seven months of trying to find a job up here in the Des Moines area, it came down to two days before the start of practice uh, or camp. And so I don't think people understand how literal when coach and I tell this story that it's just it's incredible because um, for some reason we stayed in touch um, right up to the week before I actually had an interview for a teaching position. And it's just, uh, you know, who knows if it's fate or whatever, you know, those, those types of things. But, you know, why did we stay in touch? It's just, it's just really awesome the way everything worked out. So it's been a blessing to me. So. Now, when we look back here at, um, you know, what surrounded Roosevelt uh, heading into this entire transition for, you know, Coach Moore and the entire staff. You know, Roosevelt was three and six the previous year before you arrived. And, and knowing that you were walking into a situation where the interim, seat, uh, where the interim head coach wasn't retained, uh, the, wec the record wasn't great, and the perception that there was this total rebuild starting all over, and, and you were the one who were at the head of it. What did you focus on with all that in mind? There's so much to do. What was your focus on day one and turning things around? Well, certainly, certainly for me, the focus day one was on, on finding ways to build relationships with the kids. That, that was day one. You know, how, how am I going to find ways to build relationships with our kids as fast as I possibly can? And, and so um, how I did, I, how I went about that was um, having, having individual meetings with our kids, being around our kids as much as I can, because I wasn't in the school yet, but I'd show up every day and spend hours at the school just trying to meet a kid in the hallway, just trying to say hi to a kid, introduce myself, get as many kids, you know, kind of acclimated to who I was as a person as fast as I can without being in the school. And so, um, you know, I worked really hard at just that at the beginning. And then the second piece of that was I had to find a way to get buy-in and find out who my kids that were tough and consistent and and, and build something that they could kind of hang on and hang on to and, and become this elite group in the school and do things that other other kids weren't. And so that started, in my opinion, with, with my philosophy of our program is is in the strength and conditioning world. And so we, we made a, a pretty hard six month kind of who's who's in on this deal, who can handle it, who can wake up early in the morning, who can do things that put themselves in uncomfortable situations. And then ultimately, who wants to be a part of this? And so those were the things that I looked at day one is how how do I need to build that and start with those things? And then, you know, in terms of coming into a program that was three and six and that had all these challenges and, and certainly hadn't won here in a while, it, it that to me, I got to find something every year that can really motivate me and really, you know, keep me on my on, on our edge. We talk about rider edge. I know I talked about that um, last time we were talking, but th that's a thing that, that challenged me and, and, and then I, that motivated me. And so, um, I loved that aspect of it. I loved that it was, I wasn't coming into a program that was a perennial powerhouse. I loved I was coming into a program that, that, that about every third person you talk to says you can't or you won't last and all those things. And so those are the type of things that drive me. And, and, and that's, that, I love that about coming into this program. Coach, you talked a little bit about your vision and finding that core group of guys to kind of get started and generate that buy-in. Uh, how important – was your staff in orchestrating that vision and turn around? We know that it's hard as a head football coach, but I mean, one person had, to, you had to have some help. So how 
important was that for you and your staff collectively to type, kind of turn things in the right direction before the year started? Well, you, you hit it on the head, and, and I think I couldn't have done this alone. I, I, I got some of my staff um, kind of acclimated to our, to our system right away and, and got around our kids and, and got them around our football program. I retained uh, a couple guys as well, and so they had some relationships with the kids. But, you know, we, we did that. You can only do so much between January and, and June with these kids. So how we built relationships was just getting them in the weight room and being around the kids and, and trying to go to their basketball games or trying to go to their track events. And, and so, you know, again, Coach Groper being a head coach and knowing how important relationships are to, to building a program and certainly earning trust with kids right away. He was, he was there every single weight room session from, from January, you know, through August. And Coach Chad Elbert, who another guy who coached at Simpson and Grandview and, and out over in southwest Minnesota State and kind of all over, um, he was another guy that just understood the importance of we'll get to our X and O part. And, and, and in reality, we'll probably even get dive more into that in year two. But year one, we've just got to continue to get around these kids and, and so they understand who we are as people. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people from the outsider that don't coach think that, We've got these college coaches on staff and these guys that are high, highly intelligent football coaches that we came in, and that's kind of how we, we won a little bit. But it, it really wasn't that. It was, it was actually the opposite. It was that I was around coaches that were lifelong coacher, coaches and educators and learners, and the first thing they went to, the core of it, was building relationships with these kids. And, and, and we're going to continue to do that as a program. And so, yeah, I, I leaned on our, my coaches as heavily as, as you can, you know. Um, another one to mention, you know, my brother-in-law, actually, Justin Wig, kind of his first year coaching, but um, he played college football, and he lo he's a people person. And um, so I just, as I added piece to my, pieces to my staff, both from the knowledge of football, but I think the first thing I looked at was how, how fast can we build relationships and how fast can I get assistance to build relationships with our kids so we can get this thing off the ground right away. And um, we were able to do that pretty significantly year one. Uh, Coach McGackie, this one, this one's for you. Now, when you're looking at the beginning of the season and are looking at the the big job that's ahead of you, and I'm trying to figure out a little bit where you fit into all this, what did you believe was your kind of role in this entire process, and what were some of your concerns heading into the season? Well, I think you know you hit the nail on the head. My situation was very unique. It was very unique having you know pretty much being the last staff member uh, solidified and and. Um, to go into the season. So, um, you know, Coach Moore, just, just to piggyback on, on what Coach Moore said, I know the importance of relationships. So I didn't have the opportunity to be in the halls with the kids, you know, and, and, and see them at open gyms in the off season and that sort of thing. It was right now your relationship is going to have to be built on the field. So how, how do we do that? quickly and effectively get him to trust this new guy that just showed up that was for me individually uh, that was my biggest challenge um, in, or, or concern heading into the season now I'm sure if you talk to a lot of our other coaches um, you know coach Elby's our secondary coach and and Maxie and and coach Nordine you know they could share with you what concerns they had having been with the the the, the kids through the spring like coach Moore was but for me, um, I think it's, it's you know, I, I think you might anticipate a lot of people, just like Coach Moore alluded to, saying something about hoping to learn the defense and, and learning the calls. and learn. There was that, but the most important thing to me was how quick can I get these kids to trust me? Because I literally am going to see them in a day, and I don't know half three-fourths of their names. So that was a unique challenge for me. And you know, um, learned a lot from that experience. It was really great. Coach, you guys start, you know, you started out hot. You know, you won your first three games um, really against kind of the Des Moines, the other Des Moines public schools under schedule. What did that do for a team that hadn't felt that kind of just instantaneous uh, success in over a year? And what was the impact that you started to feel uh, in kind of the Des Moines metro area as you guys got off to a fast start? Uh, you know, speaking specifically at Roosevelt, there was certainly just a, a buzz around our program and the alumni around our program and the people that we, we just got a great community, a great following of supporters. And so there there was a kind of a collective buzz of, man, they, they put a lot of hard work into this last nine months. And it, and it certainly paid off in those first three games. And we kind of 
you know, for a lack of a better term, established a little bit of a dominance over the over the metro schools uh, really early. And so, you know, that was that was our expectations going in, and, and not to be arrogant, but that's that's what we expected as a program to do. And so, um, you know, from inside our program, I think it was kind of you know it was just a little bit of a validation of, hey, we, we have been working really hard and, and we are doing things the right way and, and we do have some talent out here on this football field and I think we're a good football team. And so to do that the way we did against the, the Metro schools the first three games was, was, was great for us. It was, really, um, it was really exciting for our community. Um, but for the people inside the walls of our program, it was, I think it just added a little more fuel to our fire and said, hey, we, we know we've been, we've been working this hard, and so it, it's all kind of coming to fruition. So it was, it was fun. Those first three games and kind of becoming your, your quote-unquote Metro champion um, right away was, was, a, was a good boost for us going into that, that second tier of the season. Now, Coach McGackie, this one's kind of for you. You know, oftentimes, you know, the player's going to behave one way around the head coach and say things around the head coach that they – wouldn't say it to anybody else. And then they're going to go over to the assistant coach and maybe be a little bit different in terms of their personality and what they're saying and how they feel. And so from an assistant coach perspective, what was the vibe around the players that they're giving off after this fast start in terms of their confidence level? And, and how did your mindset as an assistant coach change with this early season success? Um, the, the vibe of the players was just, you know, uh, you hear a lot about the word fun. Um, it seemed, you know, you got to have fun. I, I, I get that. Well, winning's fun. And, um, you know, I, I think that the biggest thing was going into the East game and watching our kids in the gym, uh, interact with each other, yeah. um, having fun. Our running back, uh, you know, um, was, was dunking a, uh, I think he, they found a volleyball and we were waiting for coach Moore to come in to do some sort of team activity I don't specifically recall what it was but the kids were just having fun being teammates and and obviously winning helped that there's no question you know and I think I remember when coach Moore came and I said check this out and our running back uh jumped up and dunked a, um, a volleyball or something and, and I said I want to put that on Twitter so you know absolutely the vibe changed I think I think everybody was kind of walking on eggshells waiting to see what we were. And when the win started happening, uh, they started to gain confidence that, well, what we are is a team that could be pretty good and win some games. Then, yeah, winning you guys did. You guys started the year off 6-1. and one. Uh, You beat a, a really good Fort Dodge team who was a preseason high – I mean, they were really high, highly ranked. Um, some Division One football players in that program, um, and you and you probably could have been seven and zero had a couple things go your way against Ankeny. Um, so talk about your team culture at this point. You're six and one. The school morale is high, and just the overall feeling uh, going on within the team and the program and amongst the staff, and and what that looked like from inside the program. Well, I think starting with that game against Ankeny, you know, there's this, there's this. Uh, the the O and 120 against the suburb schools. I think that that's something that weighs heavily on our mind, and, and unfortunately, we've got to carry that into next season. But but it'll be something that we'll we'll be hanging in our weight room and, and understand that that's something that we we would like to be the one that bucks the trend on that. So we got an opportunity to play Ankeny in Game Four, and um, you know if you look historically, the last decade, the the average score of that game was about 51 to six, and so I think. For us to be in that football game, we played a we played a pretty good half in the first half. It was fourteen to seven, and they came and scored and scored twenty one, and, and, and kind of could have could have run away with it. And then and then we made a we made a good drive and scored, and kind of marched down the field, and it's twenty one fourteen, and they, they ended us beating us by another touchdown. But I think just the vibe in the stadium that night was that okay, this football team's got a got a defense that can that can probably play with most people in the state when healthy, and they've got an offense, they've got some weapons that you know that speed and, and some of that toughness against some of the Metro schools. Well, that trans that translated o over to some of those, uh, the, the suburb school as well in terms of what we were able to do. And so um, that game put all of our coaches, I think in terms of, I'm speaking for coach Jack and some of them, but I think that, that in our minds said, okay, now, now we know what, there's, that's one of the best programs in the state in Ankeny and coach Nelson, a guy who had coached college for a long time and was the head coach of that program. And they know what they're doing over there. And, we were able to, to play respectable football against them. 
And then we had some games against another, you know, a couple other ranked teams following that in a Marshalltown and a, and a Fort Dodge. And, and we beat Fort Dodge that was, as you guys said, a really talented physical football team that flew around. Wow. And they're, they're coached like us and they're coached with, with a lot of energy and, 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 a, and a lot of grit to them. And so – we beat them in a really highly anticipated game on, on one of the biggest games in the state that night and um, in front of our homecoming crowd. And, and that was – it that was a special night for me. It'll be a game that I'll remember forever just because it was – you know, I think we all felt that we go ahead and win that next game. And certainly it was a challenge with Marshalltown. But if we could win that next game, we would be a, a playoff caliber football program. And, and um, we knew the implications of that hadn't been done in a long time. And so – um, that night was a special night. I think it was a special night. I think Coach McGacky would say the same thing, and, and our staff would say the same thing. And the people in the community that, again, had shown us so, shown us so much support and, 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 and been involved and, and kind of helping, uh, you know, change the narrative on our football program throughout the, throughout the city, um, they were really proud that night. And I think us as coaches and certainly me as a head coach, that, that makes you feel really good when you, you got the opportunity to make young men their parents, the community, proud of, of where they're from and who they are and what they're doing. And, and so uh, you know, it was just a special night, you know. And then you go on, you beat Marshalltown, a, a good ranked, really, really good coach football team. Um, and so you're, you're two-thirds through the season knowing that there's a gauntlet coming up. But know that you, you really did what you hoped you could do year one, two-thirds of the season through. You, you did what you thought you could do through those, through those six, seven games. And so then when we look at, you know, everything in kind of a long, long view of things, we look at the look back at the season and see that your team did qualify for the playoffs. And that accomplishment alone is, is phenomenal for your program and for your community. And so first we'll start here with Coach Moore and then we'll bring in Coach McGacky with the same question. What was your mindset then heading into the playoffs and how are you able to like fight that complacency of just simply reaching the playoffs and then not going into it with more than simply trying to compete or maybe trying to make some noise in the playoffs? Well, we had a we had a game against Ankeny Centennial Week Eight, and again another perennial a perennial powerhouse in our state with Division One talent at, at at the offensive line position and and a, and a bunch of Division Two One AA type players in their program, and um, we played them to a to a, a, a really close game in the first half again we lost our starting quarterback we were able to put a freshman quarterback in who who we feel is going to be a, a you know probably a superstar in, in Iowa high school athletics. Um, and we got an opportunity to, again, hang around that football game. We did some things defensively that kind of solidified our, our what we felt was a really good, tough uh, defense in, in the state. And so the momentum continued to grow even after we lost that football game. Because, again, I think it was kind of, hey, we, we belong in this district, in this really tough district. Um, and, then, and then the wheels, to be honest with you guys, you guys they kind of fell off at the, at the end of the second half of against Southeast Polk. We probably didn't play our best football game. Um, we got exposed in some areas. Um, I think mentally, we, we, we didn't play our best football game. Um, from a staff standpoint, you know, there, there was probably communicating with things that we could have done better. And I think it gave us that opportunity going to the playoffs to say, all right, there's some things that we've got to do to get better. We know we've played at a pretty high level. Let's prepare. Let's enjoy this moment because you don't get that all the time to play in, a, to play in an Iowa high school football game in 4A against, again, probably the best run in the history of Iowa high school football right now. You, we get to play them game one. And so we, we did a really good job of refocusing, getting back, having fun, enjoying what, what that meant to be in the playoffs all week, be around each other as much as we could. And um, let's go into that game with, with confidence that we've done everything we can to prepare. And so um, I, I hate setbacks. I don't think it necessarily helps you. You don't lose a game to help you win in the end. But the way in which the whole season kind of climaxed there, um, towards the end and then and then the last half of the last game of the season just not play our best football um, gave us an opportunity to refocus going into the playoffs so um, and again we didn't win that game against Dallin we, we played a we, we played some good good halves of football game but they were they were a dominant football team but um, it was fun I think we regenerated the just what it, what what the season was about that week Coach McGacky, what was your kind of mindset and what your, your message to the kids heading into the playoffs with this opportunity in front of you that your program hadn't experienced in a long period of time? Yeah, I mean, I, I, really, I really don't know how to answer that question because, I mean, 
it's we just we just prepare the same week um, that we prepare every week. But you cannot deny, you know, some of the emotions of the kids and 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 you know you're playing Dowling and and maybe what they're thinking and you know I don't I don't really know how to answer that because I guess I I try as best I can um, not to get caught up in all that stuff and just break down the film and see what they do and and as a staff develop a plan and, and let's go beat them there was um you know i i definitely know um i don't think our kids were of the mindset well we're in the playoffs and and you know that hasn't happened for roosevelt in a long long time our kids definitely prepared and practiced that week with the full intentions of winning that game um, um, and that was not only that was expected so I mean you know just prepare just like we did any other team break you know with the film and come up with a plan and you know try not to uh, just you know in, indulge yourself or immerse yourself into the work and that'll put that emotional stuff aside but it, it really was a great thing to be able to look around that gym and see that we're pretty much going to be the only banner up there. And that, that is, you can't deny that emotion, but you got to put it aside and go try to win the game. And our kids really felt good. I think we had a great plan. Our kids for the most part executed the plan. We just, you know, they executed a little better that day, but that's why we lock them up next year. Coach, and you, you guys talk about, you talked a little bit about uh, the Metro schools are, you know, all in roughly about 120 versus suburban, you know, the Valley Dowling, you know, the suburban schools. Um, you know, I grew up uh, about 40 minutes west of uh, West Des Moines. So, you know, I think this is the first time in my life, you know, my family still lives there. Uh, my parents do. This is the first time maybe that the conversation has ever been not if a Metro school will ever win, it's when is it going to happen? So do you take, I mean, is that your sole focus going into the off season um, is how to take that next step? Or are there other things that you guys are, are working on in terms of, you know, how we're going to, you know, this year one was great and it was fun, but we're ready to keep going forward now. Well, I, you know, I addressed my team, the, the, the first, the first team meeting with, with my goal is to become a championship football player and, and bring a championship to Roosevelt and, that, and bring a state championship to this school and community. And so we, we've got to do that. That, that. That'll be my goal every year, you know, and, and there's certainly things that, that right now in, in December, as we're, we're 10 months away from the season, that we can do um, to, to, to make our program better. And I think it starts again with, just like I did last year, year one, is sitting down with every player and every coach in our program and getting a one-on-one -on -one with me and, and let's evaluate, let's assess, and and let's kind of collaborate how we can how we can make each other better how i can help make you better how you can make our program better um you know and then and continue to build those relationships even more than more than we already have and and so um that's a way where i think we can continue to take the next step is continue to get closer together and, and, and continue to build more trust and then again back to the the question you asked before is um how are some things that i built the program year one early what did i do day, day one I'm going to do the same thing um, day one, year two, um, and, and, and that's continue to find ways for me um, to learn and grow as a strength conditioning coach and, and the people I put around me to, to train our kids for the next month or next nine months and, and find ways to um, get that as good as we can and, and develop our kids as much as we can from a strength and conditioning standpoint. And at the same time, um, make sure that our our kids are building relationships with not just me and the coaches but with each other and, and so building leadership groups and and staying on top of their academics and and making sure that they're they're they're, they're remaining well-rounded well-rounded athletes so you know when we look back at the season you can, there's a lot of good things you can take away from it and there's a lot of good themes and a lot of good learning lessons you can take away from this but when you look at you know the experience as a coach uh, coach McGackey, if you had to kind of characterize and summarize this season for you what's it what's it been like uh it's been remarkable it's been a, a privilege it's been an honor um it's been a blessing it's been rewarding you know all those things um it's it's 
it's, um, you know, I didn't know what to expect coming into um, Roosevelt, you know, and that was, was kind of a good thing because if you don't know what to expect, why just, you know, roll up your sleeves and get to work. And so um, uh, it, it was, uh, I think that in my mind, I was thinking, well, if we can win five games or so, people will probably be happy with us. But that was the thing with Coach Moore is, you know, um, now we're, 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 we're trying to win a state title. And so what that, that kind of gave you a little bit of an edge. In fact, that became his mantra that he kind of brought here, and that's the writer edge. And so, you know, no, we're not – we didn't come here to go five and four. Um, and so – it was uh, it was it was unlike any other season I've been a part of. I can tell you that. I I know I've never cried at at a banquet before, <laughs> <laughs> and I did I did this one, um, and so it was. Uh, I think that's because uh, everybody just works so hard, and you know when you talk about uh, you know everybody the big buzz, you know if you go down the street they're going to tell you that it's important to build relationships. If you go, you know, just you two and, and running this podcast, you're going to talk about how you probably build a relationship. Well, you know, there's no greater relationship than when people are working extremely hard together um, as a team and as a brotherhood. And I think that's why I got emotional at the banquet is because the, the 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 relationships that were built were built on a foundation of hard work they weren't superficial uh we weren't buddies there were plenty of times when you know coaches would get their butts chewed and players would get their butts chewed but you could still feel the love and brotherhood amongst each other because we knew we were just trying to get better so i hope i hope i answered that okay that's all i can think of no, that's awesome you know and this is kind of for both of you um, you know, every team has a story. We know that. So as long as, I mean, as long as you've been in coaching, uh, every team has a story. Um, from this season, what is, you know, the most inspiring, transformational, transformational um, or defining moment, you know, as you look back, uh, what were some of those moments look like for you guys this year? I think as you, you look back on this season, the, the first thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember and think about as, as time goes on is just, is is you know every season is kind of defined the 2019 season by that senior class and and who those young young kids were and young men and, and as you watch them grow into men and um as their life continues i think those 19 seniors that just did everything we asked and worked so hard and 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 had goals and aspirations of playing college football and and, and knowing that they had to to raise their best in order to do that and in order to raise a banner in our in our you know, gymnasium and in our school district that they had to do things that hadn't been done before. And so just watching those guys grow and, and, and how fast they grew and how they came together and how they were doing things that they probably hadn't done before in their life. It was just, it was so neat to watch every guy buy in, every senior buy in. We had, we voted for captains this year and I, and I said, we could only vote for seniors. And, and um, every single senior when we voted had a vote by somebody in our football program. And I, I don't know. I, I said this at the banquet. As Coach McGaggy said, I, I had never been around a program that I had seen that before, which means at some point, every one of those seniors was a leader to somebody. And, and so just watching that and how that transpired was so fun. And then for me, as a head coach, I, you know, I've been around football and been in college and high school for the last 15, 16 years. Um, I got an opportunity to be around a staff that was as tight-knit as you could be in knowing each other for nine months. There was a lot of guys that didn't know each other in that room. And there was just so much, there was trust and, and a foundation of hard work and that we were, we, we were all trying to win and trying to grow these guys as young men and, and as a football players and do it to the best of our ability. Um, and that you knew when we left the staff room that the guys were on the same page. I think just being around that and, and seeing how much good we had on our staff and good people and coaches, um, and the way challenge is a coach to go in the way they inspired me and the way they worked. Um, you know, I think that helped me grow as a head coach and certainly helped me work harder because, you know, I, 
you would you would hate to see my, Coach McGacky and I and Coach Groper and I and and, a, and, a, and our and our text threads on a Saturday. We we text we text each other and call each other, you know, fifty times a day, and we're watching film and we're working twelve hours on Saturday and Sunday, and and um, it just it was like. I love the game of football so much and, and, and love growing young men and, and, and lo love helping people become leaders. Um, but I was around all these assistant coaches that were just making me better every day and making our program better. And it was just – those are the things that I'll remember that I, I, I was able to put – we were able to put this staff together and, and put these seniors together and build this program in a nine-month period of time um, that, that I hadn't – I wasn't around. I hadn't done that before. I, this is about my fourth time in my coaching career where I've been somewhere where there's been a new coach or we've, we've kind of started with a new program. But this was the first time I had seen a collective group of young men and, and, and coaches and leaders um, become so cohesive so fast. And so that's, that's what I'll remember, honestly, in, in 20 years. Um, in, the, in the immediate, um, certainly you remember the, the Friday nights of, of, of beating Fort Dodge, you know, that, that feeling that we had talked about earlier. Um, you remember the the competition and, and 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 the feeling of of winning those those three metro games and the way we did it and kind of had the buzz grew around our community that that, that was so fun and then um, you know that that last moment that you're with that team the last time you're ever with that 2019 football team in that locker room um, you know that's a moment I'll remember for a long time because you had to you had to address a, a group of young men that you know will. Some will never go on to play football again. Some will. Um, but, you know, that group right there will probably never be all back together again. And so you're kind of saying goodbye to it. And, and that, that was a – it was a rewarding moment. It, it was an emotional moment. Um, but it was a neat moment for me and, and for our coaching staff. And so those are some of the things that I'll certainly remember about this season, you know, for the rest of my life. Coach McGacky, what – what are some of the big takeaways that you're going to have from the season looking back? And what are some of the defining moments for you? Oh, man. You're going to need a part three on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we uh, – heck, I might even get emotional again here. Um, we – our kids – our kids come from a place of great struggle. Quite a few of them do. And, you know, a lot of people that would come in and coach – some of the kids that come from the backgrounds that our kids do probably wouldn't agree with how hard we coach these kids. They, they probably wouldn't. Well, those people typically have great intentions and they have a lot of love in their heart for the kids, there's no question. But at the end of the day, they're probably not going to put together a history-making season like Coach Moore and, and our staff and our, our players did. So when you see someone fail and you hold them accountable like you're supposed to, regardless of their circumstances and situation, and keep preaching that if you stay the course and work hard, good things will happen for you. Um, when they come out on top and that holds true to them, it just, I mean, I can go on and on about kids who have gone through tremendous struggle in their life. And so many people have probably thought the thing to do is rescue them and enable them. That was the first thing that at our first meeting, um, when I had to be up here in two days to our first staff meeting, Coach Moore said, do not, do not enable these kids. You know, I think he knew that we would all fall in love with them. And um, he said, do not enable these kids. And, you know, A.J. Vasquez, the struggle he's been through, you know, and, and how did he overcome it? Hard work, hard work. Um, not somebody feeling sorry for him. Um, um, but the, the defining moment for me amongst a thousand of those stories that I could tell you, you know, Smiley, all these kids. We have a defensive back named um, uh, Yona. I can't even say his last name. Coach would have to. <laughs> Yona <laughs> missed a pick that could have sealed the deal. Yeah. Um, he missed an interception that could have sealed the deal in a game. That kid put his head down. If you've ever met this kid, Man, it's hard to chew his butt. It's hard. And at that moment, you would think that he, he's done. He's done for the rest of the year. He's done forever. Well, then he ended up having another opportunity. Um, and he, you know, he had another opportunity, picked that sucker off to the deal for us. And now I see him through the holes. He has the biggest smile on his face. He walks through uh, a line of people 
people to go give Coach Moore and I and all the other coaches, anybody a fist bump. You know, that's – those are the defining moments for me anyway. I don't know. You know, when these kids and the unique situation that they have <clears> – <throat> get through it with good old-fashioned hard work, probably even a butt chewing, and they come out on top, that is huge, huge. And so that's mine. And Coach Moore, I got the next question here. And this kind of goes for maybe not necessarily just at Roosevelt, but just kind of your experiences um, as a coach so far. If you had to give one piece of advice to coaches out there who are listening or, or watching this for us, and they're pressed or they're given this opportunity to take on a job that looks like a, a – a momentous task and it looks like it's going to be very difficult for them that maybe a job that most people are going to avoid what's going to be your advice to them who want to go out and try to accomplish that goal i think you know as always be when when you're looking at, at trying to be a head coach and you're and you're looking at trying to you know further your career and be a leader of a program i think number one you've always got to be ready and and when i say by being ready is you've got to be a, a, a consummate learner and, and, and lifelong student of, of football and watching coaches around you lead and watching how they, um, how they present and handle themselves in certain situations. And so I was really fortunate as a young coach to be around a bunch of tremendous coaches and leaders and mentors. And what, what I, I was never the greatest football player or the greatest athlete or, or at, at times I didn't always have the best process, but what I, what I did was I did a great job of watching and learning and, and, and seeing how they handled themselves in certain situations. And fortunately, I, I was around some of the best, and so I, I got to use and, and, and steal some of their characteristics um, to mold into mine. And, and I think, so to answer that question is, um, try to learn from everybody around you that you think that brings a lot of good into your life, both from a coaching standpoint and, and as a man, and, and then make it your own. And, and, and don't try to be, I don't ever need to be Coach Campbell or, or Coach Rhodes or Coach Leopold, um, but they all have some incredible characteristics about them that I need to um, use to help me as a, as a coach and use to help me teach um, other coaches and other students and other athletes. But I think at the end of the day, um, don't, don't try to be somebody you're not because w when you do that, the first people that see through that are the kids. And, and you're never going to get them to really um, trust you and buy into what you're trying to say. And then in times when you don't do things right, if you're not being yourself, they're never going to believe you and they're not going to follow you again. And so, um, you know, I think us and everybody on our staff, they do such a good job of, of um, being really transparent with the kids, coaching and, and acting around the kids um, like they are and being who they are as individuals. And I think – that's something that Coach McGacky and our staff, we talk about all the time, is we want, we want things, people to do things as a group and as a team and as a unit, um, but at the same time, be who they are. And, and if kids want to dress a certain way on a Saturday night, that doesn't make it all about them, but it, it, it reflects who they are as a person and as of their style and their flair, then do it. If you want to wear long hair because that's who you are and or if you want to wear a certain earring a certain way, or you want to wear a certain shirt that represents who you are as a person and, and what your beliefs are, then do it. Um, but don't let it affect and don't make it about you if it affects the team and our program and our culture. But certainly, I think that what, that's what makes a great team. It's a, it's a bunch of individuals that are unique um, and they can come together to collectively work towards one thing and work really hard and, 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 and continue to help each other grow grow you know and grow when you're around around the team but I think you know that that's kind of my advice is 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 be who you are um take take the good from all the great great coaches that you've been around and and mold that in, into your philosophy and, and your way of motivating and leading people